Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. We talked about this. Just keep going, keep going. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, welcome to the channel. I am your host, Bethelof, and here we have a tutorials and entertaining content related to the chosen one, Linda. Amen. Amen. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Whoa, 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 wait, what are you doing? I just made that. Why are you doing that? Okay, I mean, you sort of destroyed the basket, so I guess I'll make it again. Kevin. Alright, I'll do it again. Howdy folks, I'm Dispy, and today we're making this basket. Start by creating a path curve. I like to work in Z-Up for this kind of thing, but that's optional. Set your resolution preview U to 3. Next, we'll create an array modifier and extend your array to the side. I increased my count to 7, and depending on the axis you're working in, yours might be different to mine. Now go into edit mode on the curve. Select the entire curve and duplicate it with Shift D. Right-click to cancel movement and then rotate with R, X, Y. Return to object mode and remove the array modifier. Move the horizontal curve to cover the distance of your vertical curves and raise it to the top. Now add some thickness to the vertical curves. These are going to be the ribs of the basket. Do the same for the top curves and in edit mode, duplicate it down. We'll use this to create the ropes of the basket. For the next step, we need each vert in the curves generated mesh to represent an actual control point. To get there, remove the thickness on your curve, but remember what the value was. Mine was 0.05. Now convert to mesh by going to Object, Convert, Mesh, then convert it back to a curve. Now we can edit each point on the curve directly. Now we can align the points on our curve to where we placed our ribs by moving points and dissolving the extras with Control x In Edit Mode, select alternating points from the top and bottom horizontal curves and pull them backwards. Then select the opposite points and pull them in the other direction to make forms that crisscross over the ribs. At this point, I like reducing its beveled resolution to 2 and setting it to shade smooth in object mode. Then create an array modifier and extend it down to cover the distance of the ribs. For the next part, we'll need to be in mesh mode again, so remember your value and remove the thickness to oops. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I can see that, I'm fixing it. <laughs> okay, anyway, so adjust your setting under constant before you remove the depth on your curves. Now we can convert all the curves into mesh and build the repeating pieces. Delete the last rib and create an array to extend to the side. Now we need a plane to use the surface deform modifier to bend this array. Create one and position it to snap to the outermost vertices of your mesh. Now add loops to make the faces proportionally square before subdividing. Enable simple on your subdivision modifier to prevent the corners from smoothing in. Sometimes it's helpful to apply this modifier a few times until you get the density that you're looking for. Now select your basket mesh and apply the surface deform modifier. Select the plane you created as your target mesh and click bind. Now select your wrap base and apply a simple deform modifier. We can now see that we're able to bend and twist the basket mesh using this plane. 
Find the axis under bend that will allow us to rotate backwards. If none of the axes are working, that might mean our orientation is off. To fix this, enter edit mode and rotate your mesh 90 degrees and check if you are now able to bend in the right axis. After doing this, I like to rotate it back up in object mode so my working space is vertical. You can now set your bend angle to positive or negative 360 to form a circle. Create a lattice and position it around your basket in object mode. Add a bit more resolution to give us some control in the lattice settings of the property panel, and then in edit mode, we can now deform our lattice to shape the basket. Once you're happy with the shape of your basket, enable merge on your array modifier to fuse the points together, and then you can apply the modifier. Then I like to select random loops with L in edit mode to make sure all the verts are fused where they should be. If you did it correctly, the whole loop will light up. At this point, I like to zero out the mesh, and then you can convert the geometry to a curve once more, and then re-input the depth. At this point, I decided to make it a little bit shorter and do some additional shaping with another lattice. Now to create the handle. Make another curve with thickness and duplicate it into a circle pattern and join the curves into one object. Next, we need to make sure its pivot is at the bottom, so our simple deform modifier works properly. I like to do this by selecting points in edit mode, snapping the 3D cursor there, and then setting the pivot to 3D cursor. Now you can put a simple deform modifier onto it. Set it to twist and set it how you want. I chose a value of 600. Rotate your model sideways and place a curve through it. Make sure the pivot point of the curve and the mesh are the same. Now we can put a curve modifier on the handle and select the same curve. We now have curve control to bend this handle into position. You can now shape and bend the handle to your liking. Once again, from this point forward, it's easier if the points of the curve mesh reflect real points. So remove the depth, convert to mesh, and then convert back to curve again. I'm going to pause on this piece for now and move on to the rim of the basket. I'm going to do it slightly differently to show you another option, one if you didn't want mesh inside of your tube. So this time start with a mesh cylinder instead of a curve and make it eight-sided. Delete the other edges so you only have a ring and then duplicate that ring to have four, like this. Now you can merge the verts that are touching on each ring and delete the inner edges which will give us this four-leaf clover shape. From here, you can add a screw modifier and increase the screw setting until you like what you get. Now I'll create a bezier circle curve and align my twisted piece so it has the same pivot point. Enable a curve modifier and rotate it so it runs along the circle curve. Disable the curve modifier for now and add an array. Adjust your twist settings for a better connection to the next piece in the array and turn on merge. You can now re-enable the curve modifier and extend your array. Edit your curve points until it matches your basket. Edit the ribs of your basket so that it fits nicely inside the curve that you've just created. When you're satisfied with that, you can duplicate both the curve and the geometry down for another rim detail further down in the basket. Once you like the position of your rims, you can extend the array modifier so it goes over the other side and then apply it. Go into edit mode and cut away the extra geometry and join the two sides by merging vertices or using F to bridge across the gap. Be mindful to continue the twisting of your geometry and wiggle the new edges with edge sliding to relax them. Now I'm going to return to the handle. I'm going to create a small detail that binds it together by creating a curve and then using extrude instead of depth, and then apply a solidify modifier. Duplicate those curves upwards a few times and then bump them around a little bit with soft select enabled to make them look a bit more natural. Now I can go into edit mode on the curves of the basket handle and extend them down to wrap around the basket rim. At this point, I duplicated the handle curve and scaled it negatively in x-axis to flip it. I then deleted all the points leading up until the wraparound portion and merged that new curve in order to mirror our work without ruining the twist. Now I can mirror the wrap detail and finalize my solidify and curve settings.
Now I'm going to go through the process of converting my curves to geometry so I can merge the points more easily. You can do this in curve mode too, but I like doing it in geometry mode better. Now for the final piece, the bottom of the basket. So if you were smarter than me, <laughs> you have a duplicate version of your geometry from when you created it the first time before you bent it using the surface deform modifier. I'm going to run through this process again really quick since I did not do that. Okay, now that all the pieces are in place, I'm going to finalize this basket by clipping all the loose edges and tucking them into the rims. I'm also going to convert my curves to geometry so I can close the open holes. Okay, and there you have it, folks. That's my method for making a basket in Blender. Are you serious? Again? Can you not- oh. Okay. Hey, thanks. <laughs>